What's up everyone, welcome to another video and for this one, I'm gonna talk about Enduro and share with you the gears I use. But before that, let me introduce myself. My name is Mark. I make videos promoting the beauty and potential of great locations to visit and ride here in the Philippines that one day we can be one of the must visit biking destinations in the world. But I haven't really done that yet but we do have plans in the future when everything's okay. And for this, I document my rides, new places I visit, races I join, awesome people I meet, and of course the usual bike features, product features, reviews, a few tips, and tutorials. So if you're into that, please subscribe and comment something or suggest something down below what you like to see and like the video if you enjoyed it. All right, so this will be a series of videos. I hope if you'd like that, please let me know in the comments where they talk about enduro, downhill, and other disciplines of mountain biking that's not as popular as cross country. Through these videos, I hope that these disciplines will be well known all around the Philippines and a lot of you will be encouraged to try it out. So if you've been riding for quite some time, this might bore you, but you're free to stick around and watch the video. All right, so what is enduro? Okay, enduro is actually the form of mountain bike racing, hence enduro racing. But it has become popular these days among mountain bikers that, that you will hear mountain bikers use the word enduro to describe many things like apparel, gears, type of bike, type of ride, type of trail. But really, it's about the form of mountain bike racing. And to further understand the discipline, back in the 90s, there were only two disciplines, cross country and downhill. Of course, we all know cross country is more focused on high intensity, pedaling efficiency, climbing, and endurance. Wherein downhill is more focused on the technical skills of the rider, being able to hit jumps, drops, rock gardens, gaps, at a very high speed down the mountain or the hill. Enduro is a mixture of both worlds. For you to be at the top, you have to have the fitness and endurance of a cross-country racer and the technical riding skills of a downhill racer. Enduro mountain bike racing began in Europe with the influence of motorbike enduro racing and car rally racing. The concept was simple, to get to the top of the mountain and race to the bottom time trial style. Okay, so in enduro, there's what we call special stages or timed stages as in time trial so these stages are mostly downhill with technical features and natural trail features and of course the rider with the best overall time for all the stages will win the race now unlike cross country wherein the participants are going to be released all at the same time or mass start in enduro similar to downhill the riders will be released individually with 30 seconds to one minute of interval all right so it is also normal to get passed by the rider behind you especially if they're faster the slower rider will always yield to the faster rider now aside from special stages we also have what we call transfer stages or liaison stage or liaison stage or whatever you want to call it these transfer stages usually have a time limit but these stages will not affect your overall race time the transfer stages are meant for you to get to the next stage now you can either pedal your bike carry or hike a bike or in some races they allow porters or or people that will help you to get your bike to the next stage with the given allotted time for the transfer stages, you can also use this to rest, eat, or fix something on your bike. Okay, one enduro race usually has three to six or more stages. Most of the common races here in the Philippines, well, in Luzon, are usually three to four stages. But there are also races in Visayas in Mindanao that, that has six to seven stages, and it usually takes two to three days for the race to be completed. Now, as I mentioned earlier, enduro is a mixture of both cross country and downhill and with that being said one of the biggest challenges in enduro is is that there are multiple number of stages so meaning you can't go all out in one stage and have nothing left for the rest of the other stages so you have to have the fitness you have to know how to budget your energy in order for you to have the best run for the first two three stages and have enough left for the last stage for a strong finish and also bear in mind there are what we call the transfer stages so that also will eat up your energy and that's also what makes it unique from the other disciplines all right so with that out of the way let's now talk about the gears that i use now this is not going to be a review of these items but rather just a show and tell all right so quick word of advice in order for you to enjoy the full awesome experience and to be safe at the same time you'll have to invest on good quality gear now i use the word invest because good quality products will not come in cheap. 
It also took me months to save up and acquire all the gears that I have today. In short, never settle for less and always go for the good quality. And it is always worth it to wait and save up for you to buy the right gears. Most of the time, should you commit an error during a ride, your life will depend on it. First, I add the Fox Flux. This one is the non-MIPS version. I use this for light trails, XC and road rides, or any chill ride that I won't be doing anything gnarly. This thing fits really nice, lightweight, and very cool. And of course, the drop frame. So long as there's no big jumps, drops, gnarly rock gardens, and minimal exposure, this is my go-to enduro helmet. It has fairly good ventilation for an all-day enduro racing. For a helmet with no chin bars, this thing offers great protection for your ears, jaw, and back of the head. What I also like about the new Fox helmets is that they have the Fidlock feature. The buckle snaps really easy but keeps it locked and secured and you can even do this with one hand. But I did it with two. And now the Pro Frame. For high speed technical tracks with bigger hits and maximum exposure, meaning there are cliffs that you can fall into, this is what I use. This is the lightest downhill certified full face helmet. It's got the MIPS technology and I like the big bore vents to keep your head cool during the descents and even on transfer stages where you have to climb. For eye protection, I use the Fox Main goggles. This is Fox's most affordable goggles. I bought the color black so it can match the helmet I have. You can also wear goggles over half shell helmets and still look cool. For body protection, I have the Liat Chest Pro to protect your upper body, ribs, and back. You can also attach a neck brace. This is not the lightest out there and not the best fitting, but it does the job. Now this is the Fox Base Frame Pro SL. Light protection for your chest, hips, and back. I like this better because it's lighter, cooler, and offers better mobility. Aside from being a body armor, it's also a compression-based layer. It also has back pocket to put small items, snacks, smartphone, cash, and even a water bottle. Plus, it's not as bulky. It's easier to carry a hydration backpack should you need to. Now compared to the Liat Chest Pro which is bulkier, I only use this if there are no climbs and for gnarly downhill rides. These shorts are very lightweight. These are the Fox Flex Air. Flexible and durable for maximum mobility and protection. You're not supposed to carry much with these as it only has two pockets. I like these because you can really move freely with them and they have these vents to keep you cool. These are also Flex Air shorts, but a much older version, but I like the red ones better. These are my Fox Enduro knee pads. These are old models. There are new and better ones now. I use this if the track has a lot of pedaling sections and climbing with minimal technical features. Now these are my Fox Launch Pros. I use this if I need the extra protection. I like that it has removable skid plates to prevent the pads from sliding off your knees in case of a crash. It is equipped with D3O material for extra protection. It's held nice and secure by two Velcro straps. Now for my shoes, these are my go-to flat pedal shoes. These are the Attack Podium Latte. I already did a review of these, just click the link up here if you haven't seen it. These are my clipless mountain bike shoes. These are very comfy and light. I switch from flat to clipless from time to time, but mostly I use clipless for longer rides with a lot of pedaling and climbing. These socks are from Uniqlo. For the socks, I usually prefer longer socks as I feel more protected from scratches and insects. But one of my favorite socks came from Pedal HQ. These are the Sock Guys with the Infinity Chain design. And of course, for my gloves, we have the Fox Ranger gloves. As you can see, after more than a year of abuse, it's still 100% intact and there's almost no damage at all. Now to complete the black and red combination, we have the Fox Attack gloves. We also have this D3O material here to protect your knuckles. I also have my Evox Stage 3 liter hydration backpack. I bring this for long whole day rides with limited access to water filling stations or snacks. And should I need to carry extra stuff. 
I also have my Deuter hip pack. I bring this if the ride will be short or, or we will have access to water filling stations and snacks. I will show you what I carry with these bags in another video called What's in My Bag. So once again, this is not a review, but rather just a show and tell. I will have a separate video for the protective gears that I showed you, a video for the helmets, a video for the chest protector, a video for the knee pads and elbow pads. And in those videos, I will give you guides and tips on which gears are good to get. All right, so I hope you learned something or at least got entertained by the video. If you enjoy it, please hit the like button. It will help the channel a lot. And let me know in the comments section below, which of the gears are your favorite or what are you eyeing to get in the near future to complete your set of gears. Thank you very much for watching and as I always say, it's more fun in the trail so I'll see you when it's okay to ride.